On air disposition, this is Gagarin. Let's go! It's been quite awkward lately. The once beloved concept of trends has become completely outdated. No processes have time to form, they can't even reach the level of a narrative. Even the word itself is becoming moldy, and it's not just a joke. Today, unpredictability reigns. Where will the next terrorist attack be? What weapons will be at our borders? Where will Kiev launch drones, and what will be the accusation? All this uncertainty is a breeding ground for the worst expectations, especially in the military political sphere. We can disregard the notorious Democrats, including Borrell, who are practically demanding an escalation of hostilities in Europe. Creeping militarization has already become an irreversible process. Even Canada is deploying a contingent in Latvia, which is no joke either. And it's interesting. Can anyone answer why, in 1924, the North Atlantic Alliance needed unprecedented large-scale exercises called Defender on its so-called eastern flank? The bloc claims it's about defense, but they're practicing offensive scenarios. And the heated negativity is getting closer and closer to Belarus. The buildup of armed forces continues. Specifically in the European Union and the European region, we can already see up to 32,000 armed personnel. Military personnel from both the United States and European NATO countries, we see militarization. We see the militarization of Poland. We see processes that suggest Lithuania and Latvia are ready to host a large contingent of foreign troops. And all this is happening near the borders of the Republic of Belarus. In blatant provocations against Minsk, Kiev is currently excelling, as we know. Belarus has strengthened its southern border in response, but there was a counter-response. Claims of our alleged preparation for an invasion. Well, what else can we do? Recently, there were plans to take Warsaw. In the fall, we might go for the independent. The most astonishing absurdity of such accusations is understood by all sane people, but then politicians speak up. And they are the most inert substance today, literally dependent on opposing Minsk. We held consultations with representatives of Western states on this very issue. Do the armed forces of the Republic of Belarus pose a threat to Ukraine, a threat of invasion? An interesting dialogue, and almost all of them say this. Yes, we understand there is no threat. Yes, these are security issues. Yes, the armed forces of the Republic of Belarus are in peacetime status. But politics intervenes. Why does politics intervene? To provide some kind of platform. A platform that allows them to say that a state like the Republic of Belarus poses a threat to someone. So, it's a platform for the future. Military people are, of course, specific. Doubters were invited to visit the area of interest at the border. But a Western politician is not one to show the world his wrongness. And they probably have a lot to do. And a possible attack by Minsk on Kiev. Isn't that trivial? Trivial. So no, they won't go. It's clearer from the ground. We made such a message. We made such a request. But again, I say, the West is not ready for constructive negotiations or constructive interaction. They are not even ready to conduct an inspection with us. Why? It contradicts politics, general politics. The policy of ignoring all requests, all tasks set before Belarusian diplomacy to show that, guys, everything is peaceful, everything is fine with us. This doesn't suit them. They refuse. We will shatter all their notions of our aggressiveness. But their policy is different. The policy of smearing the Republic of Belarus. It seems like a vicious circle, but from their side, it's not quite a circle. The West clearly sees who Belarus is closely cooperating with. And here it's Russia, China, and countries of the Middle East, Africa, Latin America. Moreover, our diplomacy is supported not only by the army, but also by the charisma of a person who unmistakably feels the path to stability. There will be peace on the territory of Belarus. Peace is primarily ensured by our state's policy. There is the phenomenon of our president, who has been building such a policy for many years, thanks to his personal authority, thanks to the policy he has built in our state. We live in peace. 
These days, uh, Belarusian military are mastering new models of training and weapon use in Kyrgyzstan, in Russia, where exercises are held with colleagues from the CSTO, directly with Russians. We are working intensively ourselves, including training units capable of using nuclear weapons. The production of security is established and clearly managed by the Commander-in-Chief. The unpredictability factor is also taken into account in this process, which, with a competent approach, can even become an ally.